What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today I'm responding to some of your guys' content. What? I'm responding to your guys' comments. Let's do it! First comment comes from Andrew Brewer, and he asks, Can you do a DSL 100 versus Iconic? Both amps are in the same price range. Would be great to hear the difference between the two. All right, Andrew, thank you very much for the comment. I originally was going to do a lot more uh, content with the Iconic off the bat, just in order to really kind of put it through its paces and show you guys everything that it could do. And you guys seemed really excited about that initially. And here we are about two weeks later and everybody seems like they are extremely tired of hearing of the Iconic. And you know what? I'm kind of with you guys a little bit too. That's That's been like the only topic in all the gear forums and in the Facebook groups and everything else. Basically everywhere that I frequent, that thing has, has pretty much been uh, at the top of every conversation. So at this point, I definitely don't want to play it out. I don't want to induce viewer fatigue with you guys. I want to give you guys what you want. So a lot of people are asking me for comparisons of the Iconic versus different amps. And you guys know that's kind of one of the things that we do here on this channel. But at the same time, I definitely don't want to beat a dead horse to death. It doesn't really make sense. I don't want to continuously be a dead horse and keep going on and on about the same subject. So even though it does seem like there are a lot of requests for me to shoot the Iconic out versus a bunch of other amps, I'm gonna try to lay back on that subject for a little while, sprinkle it in here and there because I bought the amp with my own money and I am going to keep it. I have no intentions of selling it, so it'll stay here and we will start getting some comparisons out there for you guys. I'll try to do some more stuff uh, in that price range to show you how the amp tone compares to other stuff in the thousand dollar price range new. But for now, I'm gonna leave it alone for at least a week and uh, do some other stuff that I've been meaning to do. So if you guys are waiting for those things from me, I appreciate your patience. Don't worry, they will come. Lore4697 says, I'm interested in seeing what you can do with orange amps. I'd like to see more stuff with the Terror amps like the Dark Terror, Jim Root, Brent Hines, and maybe even their bigger stuff like the OR15, TH30, and Rocker Verb. Yeah, man, that is something that people have been asking me for a long time for is some orange content and me never really having played that many oranges or been even being in the same room as them to know if they're my thing or not. I've had a Rocker Verb for about a year now and I only recently started firing it up to play it and I now, uh, that's been one of my main amps that I've been playing in my band Human Animal, which is more of like a hardcore punk rock type band, not not the super tight chuggy thrash thing that Bushido Code is, that amp works really, really well in that situation. And it's definitely gonna get some heavy use there. And as it gets used there, I'm getting more familiar with the tones, how to dial it in, what I like it with. So I'm definitely going to get you guys a demo of the Rocker Verb as well. But this comment came on a little teaser uh, clip that I posted. It was the first time that I had plugged into an Orange Tiny Terror, which I just purchased locally here. And I kind of wanted to catch my first reactions and put it up on you know, YouTube for you guys to see and see whether I thought it was cool or not. And I think it's pretty easy to see in my reaction that I was enjoying what was coming out of the speakers. It actually very much reminded me of the rocker verb that I have been playing and am a little bit familiar with. So definitely has that signature orange, uh, grindy mid-range. It's, it's a very vocal mid-range, kind of like a Marshall but it seems like the frequencies are centered maybe a little bit differently. The low end is not super tight. It's got kind of this like uh, nasally or, you know, not uh, almost like a slow reacting low mid thing going on. And that amp sounds good. But again, these are amps that I would not use for Bushido code or anything just for my personal taste. But I am really starting to dig what the orange sound uh, can do in certain situations. So you guys will definitely see some more orange content for me coming in the near future. On top of that, you guys are asking me to like left and right to demo the Crush Pro and the Super Crush Pro. So if Orange is watching, if you guys want to send something out, that would be cool. Otherwise, I will try to keep my eye open on the used market, see if I can locate one at a decent enough price that I can get a couple demos out there and move it on and not, you know, lose my ass on it. But until either of those things happen, I've got a Rocker Verb 50, I've got a Tiny Terror, and you guys will be seeing demos of both of those very soon. Who Am I Will says, someone with a Kemper or Axe effects, look at what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. Seriously jealous, man. My gear would probably be closer to this if I hadn't sold all my pedals and amps. So this person is referring to my gear tour that I posted earlier this week, in which, you know, as you guys, if you guys have watched it, 
it's ridiculous. There's a ton of gear. Really made me realize that I need to start offloading some stuff, so. But yeah, that is actually a comment that I received not only uh, in YouTube or on YouTube, from YouTube. I feel like my brain just melted trying to figure out how to say that. But in life in general and long before I started my YouTube channel because I've been a massive amp collector for a while now, but people are always leaving comments or you know saying to me like, dude, why don't you just get a Kemper? Just get something, profile all those amps and sell them and then you'll have so much more money. And while that is a great idea in theory, here is how I feel on that subject. Yes, the Kemper is a cool piece of gear. Yes, the Quad Cortex is a cool piece of gear. Anything you can profile your amps with, really, really cool, really useful piece of equipment, especially if you're the type that doesn't like to have a whole wall of amps sitting there, because you know a lot of people don't, and I totally understand that. But the thing is, there's no real way to use that where it sounds like the amp in the room. Now you could put it through the tube power amp of you know one of your heads or something like that into a 4x12 cab and that's gonna get you really close. But where I see the Kemper and the Quad Cortex as uh, a main benefit when it comes to profiling tons of different amps and having all those on tap is recording. That's a great recording tool and I could totally see getting tons of use out of it for that purpose. But for me, nothing replaces the sound of the amp going into a 412 cab, moving some air. When you use something like a, a Kemper into a powered speaker or a solid state power amp into a 4x12 cab, it's just not the same to me. It's not the same. There are instances when it gets close, but it's just, it's not the same feeling. There's such a, it's such a, a visceral experience to have a 4x12 pushing air and you literally being able to feel it in your chest, feel it react with the palm mutes. I mean, even in a band situation where I'm not turned up loud enough, you know, human animal sometimes doesn't like to get as crazy on the volume as I do, like I do with Bushido Code where those guys indulge me. But when I can't feel that amp reacting under my hand and just kind of feel it moving some air and everything, it's just not as fun for me. That's the same reason that my girlfriend always gets on my case about when I play guitar, things are too loud. It's just because for me, it's not fun if it's not loud. That's just how I am, man. And it's, it's, it's not the same experience if you're not moving air with those speakers and cranking up the volume. And, and it's not the same experience if you're going through a powered speaker uh, simulating a cabinet as opposed to a real life cabinet. So you guys are absolutely right. And there are plenty of people out there who, you know, can achieve a lot of the same things that I can achieve with a little Kemper unit or a little quad cortex that I can with my house full of amps and cabs. But for me, the experience just isn't the same and that's all it comes down to and it comes down to the individual like many things that I talk about on this channel. Trent is talking about my intro video where it has a little clip of Aftermath by my band Bushido Code. So Trent, used in the recording, those amps were on my side, a 5153 50 watt 6L6, and my Splon Pro Stock 6550. Both of those were going into Freedman V30 loaded cabs. The Splon was going into a Freedman 412, SM57 on the V30, and then an SM57 on the green back up top. The 5150 was going into my Splon cab with a V30 SM57 right on there. On Derek's side, the lead guitars, he's on the left side. His amps were a Splon Pro Stock. His amps were a Splon Pro Mod KT88, which was also going into my Friedman cabinet, and he had an SM57 directly on the V30. And then his Chariotone was going into a Splon cab, where he had a mix of eminent speakers in there. I don't remember exactly what eminent speakers are in that cab. But yeah, those are the amps, those are the cabs used for the recording of the intro song on my channel, which is Aftermath by my band, Bushido Code. David Cox says, the duality boost really does look like a gem. It would be hard to get any more usable functionality from a standard size boost pedal. You're right, David. I mean, that thing is literally the size of a tube screamer, but yet it can do the work that four or five other pedals do. And not only that, but it just, in my opinion, it does everything that it's supposed to do perfectly. I still can't express how much I absolutely love the Deadwell Duality DX. The modded Tube Screamer side sounds better than a Tube Screamer to me, and it has a built-in gate on that channel. 
and you can flip that channel over to the TC integrated preamp side, which also has a built-in gate that you can set individually. So if you wanna switch back and forth between those two boost styles, each one has their own individual gate depending on how you have each side of the pedal set up. And then on top of that, you can stack those in the red mode and have both of those boosts just boosting the hell out of the front end of whatever amp that you are plugged into. And the green gate doubles as a gate for the red channel so you can adjust the gate for the red channel on the duality, depending on your situation, however you're using the pedal. And man, does it really get better than that? And those pedals are still like 250 bucks shipped from Germany. I mean, that pedal was the only pedal on my pedal board for a 10 day tour other than my tuner. And I literally never missed having anything else on there. I used to have two different boosts. I would kick in a different boost for different parts of songs, but both of those are now on there in the duality and both of them have the built-in gate that is extremely silent, extremely accurate. I mean, I just, can't say enough good things about that pedal, man. And yeah, I'm very rarely telling you to go buy stuff. I'm just demoing it for you and then asking what you think at the end of the video. This is absolutely a moment where I'm telling you, go buy a Deadweld Duality DX if you can find one. I know that Daniel at Deadweld is backed up. He's got a lot of orders right now, but I'm telling you guys, it's absolutely worth the wait. It has become my favorite pedal on the planet. I have absolutely no affiliation with them. I don't get any kickbacks with sales or anything like that. I just really strongly believe that the Deadweld Duality DX is one of the best pedals that you can put on your board as a metal or high gain guitar player if you're into the overdrive thing. Scrub Zero says, another YouTuber accused you of making it up, question mark, wow. So what Scrub Zero is talking about is the 65052 from PV. PV sent me that amp, I am the first person that got to demo that amp for the world, and I am the only person that has gotten to demo that amp still, to this day. And the reason that people are kind of uh, accusing me here and there of saying that the amp is fake is because PV doesn't have a press release on the 6505 1992 original or the 65052. So you know what? I kind of understand why people might think that this thing is not real. Although I would have had to put a lot of work into manufacturing an amp with international voltage selection, a completely different screen printed backplate, as well as the front cosmetics and a detached power cable on top of all of that. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I get it. I don't take offense to this, guys. I know that... Uh, I, I think that everybody should be critical. I think they should take everything with a grain of salt and do research on their own end and not just take anybody at their word. I know I'm a YouTube guy on here that is helping, you know, make suggestions and trying to show you guys things and give you my opinion on things. But I always tell people, take everybody's opinion, take their reviews with a grain of salt because they may not apply to you or the information that they're giving you may not be correct. So I always urge people to go out, do their own research. And you know what? I have no problem with people questioning whether the 65052 that I demoed is real, whether the information that I gave out there is real. I can promise you that it is, but I totally understand people's skepticism, so that doesn't bother me at all. But with all that being said, PV, let's get those tubes in. Let's get these amps shipped out, because I want one. Thanks. Bronze Wolf says, here, let's take this super musical preamp and remove all flavor from it until it does nothing but chugs on the E string. Yeah, man, that's exactly what I do. He is referencing my more Brown Sound 3 video pedal, video pedal? Pedal video, where I demoed that pedal and made it work for the thrash stuff and everything. And uh, you know what? I understand that my play style and my tones are not gonna be for everybody. And that's fine because there are already a million other channels out there that do the dad rock riffs and the 80s stuff and the 90s stuff and the super downtuned stuff. And that's really, I think one of the main reasons that my channel has done as well as it has is because I'm doing a style that nobody else is really approaching, which is like the thrash and the hardcore thing. Not a lot of people on YouTube really play the styles of music that I do. And I think that's kind of carved out a little space for me in the YouTube verse and that's you know kind of why this channel works. I totally understand if people aren't into the way that I play or the type of music that I play. I know I'm not the most musical player. I know I'm not the greatest guitar player out there, but the way that I play, the type of stuff that I play seems to resonate with the people who follow my channel because me being a hardcore guy and a classic thrash guy, I always wanted to hear all the amps that I have in the context of the music that I play and there isn't really another YouTuber out there that does that and 
and never really has been. So I kind of always wanted to be the YouTuber that I wished had existed. There are tons of YouTube channels out there that I absolutely love for guitar gear, but one that was a little bit more niche down into my play style and my tones and everything with standard tunings, drop C tunings. So that's what I deliver to you guys. And again, that seems to be why it works. So I understand some people coming here may be a little bit disappointed in my lack of variety in the styles that I play and everything, but you know what? I'm a belligerent amateur. And for me, no leads, no cleans, power chords only. Get used to it. All right guys, final comment for the day comes from Evan Bellamy. Just recently found your channel, it's great. I'm a new guitar player, my son got me into messing around with them. And your two reviews of the DSL-20 and the MT-15 helped me choose the amps to fit our tastes. Thanks. Evan, that is super awesome to hear. I am glad that my channel has steered you in a direction where you were able to pick out the gear that you wanted and you guys are happy with it. That is 100% the reason that this channel exists in the first place. And uh, hearing comments like this always make me happy. It makes me even more happy that you're a father-son getting into it together. You as a dad are supporting your son's new hobbies and kind of engaging in the hobbies with him. And now you're probably gonna be hooked on gear, so. I apologize because you have a lifelong sickness at this point. Just something you're gonna have to get used to. But for real, seriously, congratulations to you and your son. I'm glad that you guys got amps that, uh, that you really dig. I'm glad that my channel was able to help you. That means more than you guys know. Makes me super happy to hear and just keep up with it. You ever have any questions, you know where to come. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for me today on the viewers' comments. Hope that you found this video helpful or at least maybe a little entertaining. If you did, hit that like button on your way out. Consider subscribing so you don't miss any more of my stuff. If you wanna support the channel and what I do here, down in the description of this video are my Sweetwater affiliate link. You click that link, get yourself something nice from the fine folks at Sweetwater. I get a little kickback. It greatly helps this channel grow and move forward. Or consider becoming a member of my Patreon account. My Patreon account is now at the point where I can afford to buy a pedal of my Patreon members choosing every single month do a demo of it and then give it away to somebody in the Patreon group. So consider becoming a member if that's something that you're into and helping support the channel that way. You can also join the Belligerent Amateur Nation by joining my Facebook group and Discord server, all linked in the description of the video below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time.